Hello, how are you doing? I'm Craig Parkinson. You are listening to the Two Shot Podcast. Sit yourself down, pop the kettle on. We're going to have a nice old chat. Who's in with this week? I'm going to tell you right now. <laughs> the devil are you it's thursday it's the podcast i'm craig parkinson and you're here thanks so much for joining us um oh i've got to say right thanks so much for all your lovely messages about last week's episode with bill Ryder jones we've had loads of emails and messages on social media um i'm so pleased that you enjoyed it for one um obviously but i'm really pleased that you connected with it um and some people could really relate to what bill was talking about and even more importantly, the amount of people that have said, oh, I've listened to that, I'm going to go and check out Bill's music now. It, it, that's amazing that you can do that. You know, you've, you've got somebody else to add to your collection because he's a real talent. Um, and also, once you've listened to that episode, I think certainly with the first album with If, you'll have a real different perspective on it when you listen to the music, having listened to the episode. Um, so that's good, isn't it? That's interesting. Um, what is more interesting is not more interesting what's also interesting is october the 5th we're going to be in manchester at the first ever manchester podcast festival get your tickets manchesterpodcastfestival.com um it's been a right bugger trying to sort somebody out for uh for manchester i must tell you it's october it's a bit tricky um i i've got got a list of people i'm working my way through i've had a couple of letdowns um, but on the positive side, they've also said that the people that can't come to October for me are, are going to come on early next year, and they are very, very interesting people. Funnily enough, were they on the list? No, I don't think they were on that list that um, I got people on, on Twitter to do, uh, put in their suggestions. I don't think they were, but i tell you what, they were both very exciting musicians who can have a good gabber which always helps for the podcast. What also helps for the... Speaking of good gabbers, we've got one this week. It's episode 55 with Carl Pilkington. Now, you're going to know Carl. um, He's shot to fame working with Ricky Gervais and Stephen Merchant on XFM and the podcasts. Uh, And then he started doing his, his travel shows for Sky One and Idiot Abroad, which were very much, you know, you put Carl in a certain situation, and then he's going to react to it. This, what he's doing now, he's doing a new sitcom, so it's very, very different. He's co-written it with Richard Yee. He's acting in it twice. You'll understand when you see it. It's called Sick of It. It's on Sky One. It starts 27th of September at 10 o'clock. It's on Now TV as well. I don't really know what Now TV is, but I'm sure you do, but it's definitely on Sky too, and I believe that the full box set will be available, as Sky do. Um, they release it all. So you can watch the first one. Then what's the other five? It's a six-part series, and I think the end result is rather brilliant um, because Carl's fantastic. He's uh, not only a lovely bloke, as you'll find out, um, he's honest, and for someone who gets bored easily, he doesn't have to do a lot of stuff. Right, let's dive in. We went to London, myself and producer Griff. Uh, we met Carl in the lovely Soho Hotel in London. We went up to Carl's lovely room. We ordered some lovely tea and then we had a lovely chat. It's a lovely episode and you're lovely for being here. I hope you enjoy it and I'll see you at the end. This is episode 55 with the magnificent Carl Pilkington. I'll see you at the end. <laughs> You go, this is what, where you want to be every week then. It's all right, we'll just take it out, we'll get sponsored by the Soho Hotel. Oh yeah, that's what you're talking about, isn't it? You don't know, it's tricky getting a sponsor and that, like one that well, it's you hard. care about, rather it's than well, hearing, I hear other podcasts where they're going, you know, so-and-so fresh underpants, get them free, buy an order now, get an extra pair, da, 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 and you're kind of thinking, Jesus, really selling your soul. I don't need any more craft beer in my life. That, that's the other one, I'm yeah. all right for a website. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, it is all that. It's all so that stuff. So therefore, just, you just become the norm. And what we kind of... I kind of go, well, we've 
done this from scratch. I kind of don't want to throw it all in the bin uh, now. And it depends sell on out. it if you need it to keep it going and all that. But it's tricky. Well, every little helps, doesn't it? But yeah. There you go, Tesco. They could them, come on board, couldn't they? <laughs> or just something linked to it, though, isn't it? So if it was cinema or something, or something that you sort of yeah. it sits well with it. Or something that people just something that people would genuinely use. Go, yeah, I, I, I need fifteen percent off that. Yeah. But I don't know what I don't know. Tricky. Do you need anything in your life at the moment? Do I need anything? You don't need that much, do you? It's for me. It's um, I actually enjoy the thinking if I need it. What the what the time and the space to think? Yeah, but but like like recently there was a case when I was thinking about getting a table tennis table. Why? For fun, just for exercise or yeah, fun? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I enjoy that bit of all right. Well, I could I could just go out and buy one. Yeah, but I like that thing of all right. Well, how much are they? I don't have no idea how much they are. All right. Well, would I get a cheap? I mean, it's a table. Why can? Why is the price so different? Why is? Why is it a really expensive one and a cheap one? All right. We'll go for the middle one. Uh, which one do I want? And I enjoy that. How much do I want it? To the point that I went downstairs. I was going to put it in the garage if I got it. And I went in the garage and just imagined playing table tennis in that space. To me, with myself, just like yeah. you know, getting a sweat on. Just put a, and then I realised I didn't want one. What was the realisation? Just like, I'd get bored of this. I'd get bored quickly. of it. Yeah. And I was thinking, who would have played with? Someone's got to be there. And I was thinking, could I put it against the wall and play? And I, just having all that, I know it sounds mad. No. But, but it's that thing of, I've trialled it. Yeah. And I've worked out, I don't need it. So I'm, there's a lot of people who just go, I want a table tennis table. I'm going to get one order. Oh, I'm not really using it. Put it yeah. over there. And that's that. Yeah. So I don't need, that's what, I do, yeah, the question was, do I need, what do I need? I don't know. Well, I suppose it's always... It's the need or the want. I always say, like to my little lad, you know, he's just learning. No, I want that. Yeah, you want it, like, but you don't. You don't need, need it. it. It's not going to sort of help you out or enrich you or, no. or, or, or change anything, really. I think it's just nice to know that if you wanted it, you could have it. But how much do you want it? I don't really want it. But it's nice to know you could. You could have the thing. But do you do you think about that as opposed to the table tennis table? With Every, everything. With everything. Do you yeah, go through I don't that? rush in. I'm not... Um, Impulsive. God, no. No, no, no. I, 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 I'm I, a bit... Um, yeah, I don't... I'm, I'm not good at... Man, you know, I'm saying not good at it. I'm saying that's a good thing. I think it's a positive thing. Because otherwise, you've You're got a table tennis table money, in the yeah, garage. Next to the dust. bread machine, next to the popcorn maker, next don't to talk. the... Someone gave my wife a bread machine. Of course, that's what they do. Said, what? No one's ever bought one. No. It's always passing them on. Why do you need it? And do you know where it is? It's just sat on the bottom shelf in the pantry. It's been there for two months. They're gathering quite dust. chunky them as well, aren't they? are fucking massive. They're for keeping for... A... I could have had loads of bottles of water there or something. Yeah, and it's like, God, it's not hard. There's, there's 24 hour shops are open. If you need bread... Yeah. Go and get a loaf. It's not. It's not worth the fanning about. And no doubt, in a few months, that bread maker will be passed on to somebody else. Definitely. And it'll Definitely. probably come full circle. Yeah. And come back to us at some point. And end up back on that shelf. Yeah. Collecting the... So um, yeah, I do. I, I overthink. I, I drive Suzanne up the wall with just like, just get it, just buy it if you want one. <laughs> it's like, no, I'm I'm enjoying the process of working out if I, if I want. One. I wouldn't necessarily think personally overthinking things in life is is seen as a, a negative or, or a bad thing at all. I think it's positive. I think it is good. Yeah, I suppose as long as you're not letting it stop what you want to do. Does that ever happen with you, that it stops you or stops somebody else? Like you say, uh, Suzanne, does it drive her up the wall? But what would she rather have? A, a, a clutter-free garage or a, a dusty table, tennis table? You know what I mean? As an as an analogy, she just wants me to be happy. I know, yeah. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think because the little I know, yeah, I've always you've always seemed yeah content and and happy. I am, but even that that's a bad word these days, isn't it? What? When you're saying content, People I said sort content of, uh, in an interview the other day because I was jump I was on you. I was genuinely content. I'm, well, I know, but they say you should want more than that. Why? I don't know. It's just the world we live in, isn't it? It's like you know, only here for so long and push yourself and all that stuff. Yeah, it's but by like... I'm not... By saying you're content doesn't equate to laziness. 
It's just like, I'm actually really happy. I feel lucky and I'm happy with my lot. Yeah, but like I was saying to you in, in the lift coming here, people aren't... It's funny, isn't it? Because a lot of people say you should live in the moment, but in all those interviews I've been doing of late, they're all talking about, what are you doing next? What are you doing next? Yeah. It's like, I'm here to talk about the thing I've just done. Yeah. Don't worry about what's next. No, and I that's the thing. That's, it's like, I don't know. I'm not even, I'm not <laughs> hiding anything. I don't know. Yeah. I've just this minute finished this. It's not even been on the telly yet. <laughs> so can we just like talk about this? Yeah. And then if anything comes up in the future, you'll find out because I'll, I'll be talking you. to you again, won't about, I? About, and then you'll no doubt ask but, me what else is after this. Yeah, yeah, they will. Yeah. They will. So I think that's the world we live in. It's just content doesn't fit into that, does it? It's like you should want more. You know, people, uh, I don't know, does it mean that you're, you're full of energy and that? It's like, oh, he's doing a lot. He's doing that now. He's doing this. He's doing that. Well, I'm doing nothing. I just want to yeah, But that's all right as think well about to what do I've nothing. Done. Well, the other thing with me is I do struggle to know if I'm enjoying the thing that I'm doing. Like now, I don't know if I'm enjoying this. It's, what, it's me, fine. What, me and you talking? Yeah, just, just being here, doing this. Yeah. For me, it's always later on. That, that you'll, you'll think I'll about think it. I'll think about it and go, oh, I didn't enjoy it. And that's everything. It's nothing to do with you. That's like we went away on holiday about four weeks ago, and when I was there, Suzanne was sort of going, this is good, isn't it? And she was like, oh, mind you, you don't know yet, do you? And she knows that <laughs> when I get home, after it's been and gone, she's like, right, what did you like about it? And I'll go, oh, yeah, that was good, and that was good. But at the time, I'm, I'm waiting for it to go wrong, I think. I'm waiting for something to annoy me or something, just something to go wrong on that holiday. So is that a worry in you, it, like, in general, in life, in everything? Yeah. Every right, what about if you're, you, you and Suzanne go out for a meal, and you're having a meal, and that's an immediate thing, an immediate reaction If I'm away on holiday, buds. I'm thinking, I don't know this place. Am I going to have the shits in an hour? Right, okay. So, so everything's, you... I'm always thinking, oh, what if, like, I can't, I just can't enjoy things. I, I never go, woo, I've never done that. And that's, you need to be in the moment, don't you? When, you, when you're doing something, <laughs> yeah. you're sort of like, yeah! I, I don't have that, because I'm, I'm, not, I'm not that relaxed with the moment. Right, what about watching a film? Do you, do you have to, can you enjoy, watch the film and go, I enjoyed that bit, or I enjoy, that made me laugh, or is it contemplation afterwards? I think, well, again, I'm thinking about it after, like I said, but I, th I quite like that as well. I do like that thing of a couple of days later when you go, do you know in the film when that happened? Yeah. A lot of films you watch and you don't say anything about them. It just happened. No, because loads there, of rubbish. You yeah, so. so you don't care. Yeah. But if it's a good one, there's the, a, a one I've, I've struggled to understand and it keeps, it stays on your mind and then you talk about it a few days later. That's, yeah, there's another example, I suppose. Enjoying, I suppose things that people do that they enjoy in the moment, it's normally mad stuff, isn't it? Like jet skis and stuff. I can't imagine... A little bit, but, like, if I'm eating, a, like, a really nice sandwich, I'm, I'm eating it, I'm going, oh, I'm loving this sandwich, that's tasting really good. I don't... I don't... And I'm, maybe an hour afterwards I go, yeah, I really love that sandwich, but personally I won't eat the sandwich and then go, I'm not sure how I feel about that, but I'm, I will do in an hour. Do you know what I mean? No, but can you enjoy it? Say, like me, um, if I had a, a, like, a bacon, lettuce, tomato some chips when i'm eating that a little bit of me is worrying that this is quite a juicy sandwich i'm gonna and i'm a messy eater right so i'm so busy sort of trying to shove it in without it going down my top or whatever that i'm not i'm not 100 percent right enjoying I, it i understand maybe if someone said to me how was your sandwich i'd go yeah it was all right that yeah because i got away with it and i've still got a clean shirt on. yeah yeah i i know it's annoying i don't it's kind of um I think just pro people are programmed differently, aren't they? And some yeah, really I'm, do live in the moment. But yeah. if that's not how you are, I don't think I can change that. I think that's just how I am. Well, no, should you, really? I mean, I'm... no, but at the same time, I, I, because people have said it, I've gone, am I missing out? I'm a, I should have tried and do that, but you can't. Because that wouldn't be you. I know. I know. But sometimes we live in a world where you're trying to fit in, aren't we? You want to, you want to. Well, it's fun. I was thinking about this the other day about fitting in and. Also, people's perceptions yeah. of you and how they think you should behave. Does my head in? Does my and head I, in? And there's this brilliant musician um, that I was listening to in an interview called John Grant. Do you know right. John Grant? What's he done? Oh, he used to be in a band called Mid Lake, and now he's. he's I so don't want to use the phrase. Stuff is it? 
mixture of lots of stuff. I'll send you some stuff. Right. You'll, you'll, I think you'll really like it. He's a, he's a smart guy, very, very funny. And he was saying, I'm not good at loads of stuff. I, I care about stuff. I don't necessarily think I'm good. But what I'm really good at, he's not giving a fuck about somebody's perception of how I should behave or what the behaviour is that they think I should be, be yeah. doing right now. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And do you think he means that? Oh, I think he absolutely, de- he definitely means it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely. Lives in Iceland. But he's from here? No, he's from America. Yeah. But I don't know why living in Iceland has anything to do with it. It's just more information about him. Yeah. Yeah. It's funny that people's... In. Right, he's, oh, 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 I'm thinking now that you're expecting me to walk into this room and you want me to behave in this certain way and now I'm going to... Like, I would worry about that. I would worry about things like that. Not, not as much now, but I think years ago I did. Well, because I don't, I'm not a, that much of a sociable person either. I like my own company. I'm not, uh, I've never gone out with a large group. I, I, I wouldn't enjoy it. I know I wouldn't enjoy it, so I don't do it. But what happens there is when I get invited to things like that and I go, no. They go, what's wrong with you? You're miserable. And it annoys me that because it's like, look, you're doing what you want to do. Yeah. I'm doing what I want to do. If I went along, I could just go, do you know what? It's important, so I'm going to go. But then I'd go, and I, it's, there's a chance that I'd ruin the night. Because you won't be enjoying it. Because I won't it. be enjoying it. Yeah. So then no one's winning. Yeah. And I've got over that now. I'm happy to go, let them think what they want, because they really don't know me. But I'm not going to ruin their night and give them a reason to not like me. Yeah. I'm just not going to go. But well, it's still that thing of should have, should have go, should have fit in, should have sit there smiling like a goon, just so they're having a good night. <laughs> but in a way, that's you caring about them, because you're going, if I come... I'm going to ruin it. I'm going to feel in a certain way, which is going to project yeah. out into your group, which is going to fucking yeah. ruin it anyway. And that's right, people should know. Like, most people who know me know the worst thing they could ever do for me is throw a surprise birthday party. Yeah. I, I think I just turn on meals God. and just walk straight out, yeah. probably sweating. Well, no one likes it. That's why they call surprise I think parties. So, I think, I think some why, people... That's a way of making a party happen. No, I think somebody do. I think some people do like it and and would secretly kind of crave it. Oh, well, yeah. No, it's not And for I me. can't really... I've never had a party. I've I've never, never had a... I don't like birthday parties. Full I don't like birthdays, Don't really. like, no. I don't know what they're don't about. Re- I don't... I, know, I mean... <laughs> what are we celebrating? I, I, I don't get it. <laughs> I don't get it. And the song... The birthday song, I hate it. Do you know that? You know when they go, happy, that starts, and you go, right, well, 15 seconds is awkward now. <laughs> happy birthday. And, and it's everybody's just like, oh, got to join in. I mean, the amount of remakes they've done in films and songs, why has no one ever created something new? What, a new birthday moment? song? Yeah, just something that's not so, it's ploddy. If it was faster, if it was rapid, at least it would it'd be over faster. <laughs> but that thing of like, ah, bird, you know, uh, oh, it's, it's horrible. I hate it. I really hate it. And nobody likes singing it. No. Oh, come come on, you killjoy. We've got to do, oh, oh hip, hip, par- oh, what does I that mean? I don't know. I just feel awkward in that situation. What do you do? Suddenly you hold yourself all awkward. Oh, oh. See, I've had a new round of singing it because I've got to go to kids' birthdays now, which is another thing I really oh. hate. God. Because then you've got to speak to other parents and you've got no connect. The only connection you've got is that you both had sex with at the same time that and you've it. produced a child. Yeah. 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 And I'm sh- you, you're you sure you're great, but there's no... We don't, we're forced together to have this conversation and for the f- first half an hour, it's going to be about kids and... And oh, what did they do? Yeah, I'm glad. I mean, I haven't got kids, but I, I wouldn't be entertaining that. I think everybody, I'd just let everybody think that Suzanne's a single mother or something because I'd never go to any <laughs> of those go. events. Well, we've we've started taking turns. I did the last two because you were away, so now you've got to do two on the bounce. So I'm I'm scot free, which is quite a good deal. And have you got to? Have you have you? Can you not just say like, is it a lad you've got? Yeah, or? and. You've got to go, have you? It's just expected these days. It is expected, but I've started to ask him. Do you enjoy it? Do you want it? Do you want it? Do you really want to go? Do I really have to go and buy something? Not that I'm stingy, but it's like, oh. (sighs) Did they do that thing now? I've heard a a thing that if it's someone's birthday party, everyone gets a gift these days because everybody has to be involved. What? What, everybody who goes to the birthday party? Yeah, all the kids. Oh, well, it's a kid's party. Yeah. Because it's that we live in that world, don't we, where it's like, don't leave anyone out. 
So even though it's some kid's birthday, everybody's getting something. Well, not on my watch, no. Maybe that's a... Uh, uh, yeah, uh, that's what I've heard. Party bags, yes. Everybody gets, like, a piece of cake and some rubbish in a party no, bag. No, it, now it's all... It's like past the parcel, haven't they done it so everyone gets something? So you, there's no kid going home disappointed. <laughs> <sighs> well, you're I at a party, kind of, and you know, you're that you're lucky that you're at the party. Why don't you not just enough, enjoy that? Not they want a gift. They want a gift. Then where does it go? Where well, does it escalate this, after this that? Is why kids are all mad, isn't it? I think so. Anyway, I thought that's a lot of moaning there. I don't think we're moaning, just talking. I know, but it seems I don't want to be one of them people. It's like I'll oh, listen to him. in our day. <laughs> You don't want to become that, do you? But unfortunately, it's just what happens, isn't it? I think it? it comes to it. I was talking to somebody the other the, this morning, just kind of on the text, which I kind of hate that rallying text because yeah. you go, oh, well, I've got to respond now. Where does the, When does the conversation yeah. end on a text? Yeah. Do I have to go, got to go, I, bye? Yeah. So I've got Because it never ends, does it? No. Really? So that's why I don't like... Is I think if no it? one puts a question mark, don't I? You've got no. There's no contract there that you've got to answer it. Oh, and then an hour later you might get what? What? Why are you talking con- to me? We're having a conversation. That were we? Just pick up the phone. Yeah. Have a conversation. Yeah. Yeah. It's this is it though. But there you go. That's yeah. uh, not in my day. Well, tell me about your day. Tell me about growing up in Manchester. Whereabouts were you? South Manchester, place called Sale. Um, drove past it last week. Did you? Mm. We were up there doing some recordings last week, so I drove yeah. past sale. Yeah, uh, Racecourse Estate, which massive, massive estate, and all the all the avenues are named after you know racecourses, so Epsom and Chepstow and all yeah. That. And um, I don't know what do you want to know. I mean, so it's you, your mum and dad. Yeah, brother and sister. Are they do you have older or younger than you? Carl? Older. Um. And it was it was all right. Uh, I'm trying to think, it was just all. I just used to. What do you want? To know? I mean, was it like uh, it, it was what it was? You just kind of well, this is where we grew up, and it's kind of fine. Because I'm trying to picture you when you were growing up as a kid. Yeah, I mean, what age are you talking here? Then sort of like you know, you, you're seven onwards. Seven, right? So I think <laughs> I've got a. You sounded a bit angry, Carl. I uh, know, but, but se- uh, that's uh, all right. No, se- seven. Do I have to picture... be really specific? No, it's just like you know, if you're talking about being really young, it's like you have little flashes, don't you, of things. But that that was it's going on. A terrible memory, like going right, right back. Yeah, but some people are like, I remember being breastfed. Yeah, I know. It's kind of like, why would you want to remember that? <laughs> I thought babies were designed to forget. <laughs> yeah, that. but yeah, so I don't remember that. I, that's what I was worried about when it's like, what was it like? It's kind of, <laughs> no, I'm but, not going back but, there. But, but, but yeah, so seven, seven's <laughs> like. Um, have you started school at seven? Uh, yeah, right. So I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm all right. Um, seven is infants, isn't it? Mm. The infants going into juniors, yeah. Yeah. So at school, I didn't, I didn't like it. I knew by that point I didn't like it. What um, did you like about them? Do you remember? The school wasn't great. It was a wreck. A wreck of a school. Right. It's not standing now. It was falling down then, and it was, it was always cold. I remember that. I don't. I didn't see the point in having a uniform because they always had my coat on. Yeah. It's like I could be wearing anything under this. Freezing, and it was ro- really rotten school. Like, um, if you if you got done, and you did detention, it wasn't a detention. It was just you staying behind for half an hour. Did have you doing stuff to the school because it that it was that much of a wreck. Well, like, like home improvement. DIY type stuff. Really? Yeah, you'd, I'd, I'd re-putted a window. <laughs> Did you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, when I was about, uh, like you say, seven, eight. <laughs> which, which, looking back on it, in a way, that's quite good, isn't it? Because yeah. that's something that's useful. Rather than just sat in a room doing nothing. You've got your doing learning, lines, a tr- learning what, a trade. Yeah. What, but it's a trade, so it was that. And I, I, I did weeding as well, weeding in the playground once. Did not have a caretaker? I don't think they did. Because who d- honestly, it was such a wreck. A caretaker would have walked in and gone, "Fuck off! I'm not looking after this." Because it was a wreck, proper wreck. And it's at that time I don't, maybe councils were struggling then in the seventies. Yeah. And the walls, I just remember walls being like really damp. You could just sort of put your fingers in them, oh. and um, really depressing. Um, was that the general feel from out the school, like with all your mates and stuff? I, 
well, we, I suppose you don't know anything else. But again, looking back, everybody, you know, I've got a couple of mates who still see, and they sort of go, oh, it was bad there, wasn't it? It was bad. Um, I suppose you only know that when you've got perspective and you go, to an, you go to another school and you go... This is a bit better. It's a bit better. Yeah. Isn't yeah, it? I can take my coat off. It's not as bad it's, as that. It's heating. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I suppose in a way you're never going to enjoy school when it's like that anyway, are you? It's not... How can you in surroundings like that? Yeah. Um, what else was Were your doing? brother and sister at the same... Did they go to that same school? Even though they're, a, they're No, a because we moved... I think we came from another part of Manchester when they were at that age. Right. Like in uh, just near, um, what was it called? Chortland or Medlock, which is just near the Manchester Apollo and that. That's where mum and dad were. And then I think they were a bit slummish, the slummy area, and they wanted to clear that. Right. And they moved everyone out a bit to these new council estates. What, so, What did your mum and dad do for a living, Carl? Oh, I mean, how long have you got? My dad's uh, long as you still, want. but it's just my dad has done everything. To this day, I, I see him quite a lot, and I speak to him on Skype if I'm not nipping round. And every time I speak to him, it's like Mr. Ben. <laughs> Do you know? He's, he kind of goes, "That reminds me of the time I did that." And he's kind of like, "I didn't know you did that." It's re- if he did a CV, it'd be it, you bring it out in hardback. <laughs> Honestly, he's done everything, everything, because he's from that time when that's what it was like. Yeah. You, you, you didn't need loads of qualifications. You just go from one job to another. A yeah. factory closes. You do something. So he's done the things that I remember is mainly uh, a lot of driving stuff, um, work for the Express, some sort of transport manager style thing with yeah. the delivery of the papers to the shops. He's done, he had a courier, got a couple of vans, did courier stuff. He had a black cab. He did turfing, which I helped do that with him. Um, honestly, just, just the endless. The list goes on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, loads of things that I remember him just doing. Um so yeah, was he always around then, or was he going away a lot to work? Or he's, he, I just the memory is with me dad work. It was almost like I, I, I knew that's that was his role in the relationship. It's like he was earning the money. It was me mum's sort of job to look after us, and like he did a lot of night work as well. So when you're talking about me being younger, I remember not being able to have that many mates around because it's like you're dancing bed. Right. Yeah. 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 Don't be noisy. Yeah. Everything's sort of like... Yeah, I used to have a mate like that. We used to go around after school and he goes... Yeah, it's yeah. it's a night, it's a real pain in the arse. Mm. I mean, we, we, my mum used to always have the telly on watching soaps and stuff and subtitles. Subtitles always on. I thought they were invented for kids who's like <laughs> dad's work shifts. I didn't know it was for, you know, deaf people. And that was the thing. Everything... I just remember sort of mooching about and I was like, what are you doing? Don't you... Don't you, don't you, don't you don't. Yeah. Um... And then it'd be my job to sort of go up and wake him up, and, go, you know, and he'd always be a bit groggy and knackered. Um, and yeah, that was that's my memory of him. So he was always doing that. My mum did jobs at schools, you know, uh, cleaner. She did work in the canteen. Yeah, yeah, work in the canteen of some college. I remember being at South Trafford College in the canteen there. Um, shop work, uh, you know, that sort of stuff. A bit yeah. of extra money. Something to keep her busy, but nothing that took over. You know, it was my dad earning the main money. And then towards the end, they bought a butty shop in sale, just near the station. So they worked work, work together on that? Kind of. My dad's had the black cab as well, and my right. dad's not that good with people, so my mum didn't really like him in the shop. You know, if people were lingering <laughs> or getting in the way and they'd sort of stand near the door eating the butty, and it's like, it's not a place you sit down and have, but take it out, you're in the way. <laughs> and my mum didn't... Uh, she was like, you're not good at this. Um, you know, if people wanted, it's, it's just not the sort, you know, the niceties you've got to do in a shop, yeah. show interest in yeah. the customer and that. My dad doesn't do that. So he'd make sure there was enough bacon in, enough ham in, all that. And then my mum would write, right, you're going to do the cab you, and got then on pick us it. up later. Yeah. Um, so, I used to work in a news agent when I was a kid. And, you know, some people used to come in and just sort of read the magazines. Right. I used to go, it's not a library. Yeah. Buy it's, it and get it's, out. It's true. I mean, you need a bit of that, don't you? Um, it's a balance, though, isn't there? I yeah. suppose if you're running a shop. Yeah, yeah. Because word spreads, you, got, you don't want to go in there. Don't go in there. there. Right, miserable sod, yeah. yeah. And, and I imagine that probably, you know, would have would have happened. But, um, so yeah, they did that, and that took up a lot of time. I mean, they worked really hard. That's, that's the thing. I mean, I think that's been ingrained in me, really. What a work ethic. Yeah. From me, Dad, it was always like, 
I knew that you have to pay your way in life. It's like earn money, earn money. Don't you, you get nothing for now? Earn money, and I, even from a young age, I was coming up with ways of making money. I was always working. I was never a kid who sort of stood about on a street corner, sort of up to no good. So you'd I, always have a, like a Saturday job or something. Saturday job, paper round. I love me. I mean, to this day, love me paper round. Loved it. I, I loved everything about it. I Why? Loved, Why do you love it so much? It was early mornings. It was like out on the streets when it's quiet. There was no one there to annoy you. I had a job. I felt like I had an important responsibility that the first thing people rely on when they get up, the paper, knowing the what's going on in the world, yeah. I'm delivering it to them. And I, honestly, I used to do it at like, I'd be out at quarter to five. Really? I used to wake up the fella who ran the shop. <laughs> And I was like, and, and if I could, it meant that because I got up early, I could do an extra round if someone doesn't turn up, so yeah. I could earn a bit more money. Yeah. And uh, I just loved it, listening to the radio, going round on my bike, um, and delivering paper. Honestly, if you went round the streets where I delivered papers and said to them now, when was a good time for, like, when, when was your favourite delivery thing? They'd say the period <laughs> I did. I reckon it's a golden... Do you know people heart back? It's not like it used to be, like yeah. we were saying. They'd say... Oh yeah, remember the like the eighties when that lad used to it used to be there for you. The ink was like still wet on the paper, and I just loved it. I, I took pride in it. I think that's still with me as well. It's like if I do something, I'm going to be like, as good as I can be. Yeah, at it. and I was the best. At, at, you know, I'm not a mega confident person, but I can tell you now, you I was shit a, out of that. Absolutely brilliant at it. Everyone got the paper, didn't get ripped and stuff. Shoving it in a letterbox, I cared. No it's dogs. It's the best job. Just honestly. So, yeah, I did that. I did, um, I worked in a supermarket. Um, did you ever go in for a milk round? I remember when milk rounds were yeah, quite popular. No, that never. I think I preferred the working on my own. Yeah, because otherwise then you've got to speak to you've the You've got to deal with this and, bloke. Yeah. And it, it's annoying. It's going to be annoying. So, so even back then, when you were younger, being by yourself and having your own company yeah. was very important. Yeah, I liked, I, I just saw people as... Um, at some point, they're going to disappoint me. Yeah. Um, did you ever think I'm, I'm, I might disappoint them? Maybe there's a bit of that in. What do they expect from me? Or what do they want from me? Yeah, I know it's bad, isn't it? Well, you know, there's no such thing as a free lunch. No, no, I do, I do worry about that. Um, so the paper round shops, I sold stuff. Um, what computer do you mean you sold? games. What like? What, what like in a shop? No, no, I used to. <clears throat> Buy them with me own money mm. for like three quid, and then copy them oh, and yeah. sell them at school. What, and on, tape to tape, tape to tape. Yeah, and um, that was another. I was raking it in. <laughs> Honestly, <laughs> I was yeah. like a Gordon Gecko. I had so much money. In fact, that's it. Got to the point where that's what I was going to school for. I was really busy, like, um, yeah, just selling these games. It got really flogging. popular, making loads of money. That ended because a, a kid. I did a game for a kid and then it didn't work and he said, not working, he's like, I'll have another go at copying it because he started to, I think it was getting harder and harder to copy these things. Yeah, because the technology. computer games company kind of got yeah. wind of it, didn't they? And it was like, I'll do it again, do it again. And anyway, he told his mum, then his mum come in and it's kind of like, what do you tell your mum for? Oh. Because it was like his dinner money and, uh, and um, yeah, the head teacher sort of gave me a bollocking and took, I must have had about 12 quid on me that day and he took all that off me. And that was off from the computer again, so I couldn't do that. But that was a good little earner. I sold um, fizzy drinks. My dad had a soda stream. So I used to like go into the bins, get loads of empty bottles, give them a wash, make fizzy drinks, and go to school, sell them for like 25p and stuff. And I, that, it's funny, because thinking back at it, I used to stand there and go, drink it then. And they'd be like, I don't want it now. It's like, I want the bottle. <laughs> <laughs> it was stuff like that, but I did loads of money. It was all little scams. Like, not even a scam, really. It's just making money. If I've got to go to school, I've I want to make this I've worthwhile. I've got to get something for me yeah. from it. So it was all all stuff like that, washing cars um, for people. It was all, like I say, that was in my head, got to earn money. And I wasn't. it wasn't because I needed it. I wasn't, like, spending that money on anything. I just liked it growing in this white tub I had under the bed. And when, I, you know, a few pound coins or whatever, a few notes, it's like, change that to a fiver. Yeah. And then, oh, it's building, change the fivers to a tenner. And it was just something to look. It was almost like watching, you know, growing a plant or something. It was just watching it get bigger. And he enjoyed, like, I suppose it made me feel like I've got a worth. Yeah. You know, it's like, that. I've done that. 
that money there that's growing, I'm I'm doing it. It was for no reason other than just seeing it as, a, I suppose, security as well. You know, hearing that, hearing from my dad that you need money. But it is like your dad, because your dad was doing all these all so different jobs stuff. all the time, so you were looking up to him yeah. and doing what he was doing. And I didn't, know, I didn't know what I'd want to do with my life if I wasn't working. And in a way, that's what's happened later on in life with, with this. I thought I'd got to a point where I didn't have to work and I didn't want to work, but it's, it's important, isn't it? You've, well, it you've is. got to do something. But I think it's important not to get bored. Like, yeah. I, I can't sit around and no. just, just... As much as I love time by myself and my the one pleasure in my life, I would just want to sit in the cinema all day and watch do films. But yeah, absolutely. If I'm by myself, then I haven't got anybody else's opinion about w- what I'm... If I'm wasting my day or an opinion on what we've just seen, I don't want that. I need to just... I'll have my own opinion and I can wrestle with that and I can deal with that, but I can't have anybody else with me. You see, for me, if I did that, and I like films, if I did that, though, I'd be sat there going, is this something else I should be doing? Yeah. Is this something else? Something more worthwhile than this? Not even worthwhile, is it? It's just something... I should be doing something else. Is there a small worry that I should be... Yeah. Um, but I suppose is that a bit of guilt as well? Um, Does, would guilt come into it? Is it guilt or is it just in you? Is it just, I mean, what's wrong with just having a bit of time out to do nothing? But I don't know. I mean, when I sort of, we're jumping about a bit here, but when I sort of knocked all the travel stuff on the head and I was like, the house is paid for, that's all I did this for, it's done, do nothing. I sat about for, I didn't sit about gardening, messing about, learning a bit about gardening, Um, you know, Interesting stuff with nematodes and all that. Trying to look after my lawn. Yeah. I got really sort of like a bit mad about my lawn. Like it's got to be spot on and looking after that. And um, But there's only so much time you can mess about with a lawn. And then <laughs> Suzanne's got her life going on. She's got mates. And she's got like, what, what are you doing today? Oh, I don't know. And she'd go out. I'd sort of be walking around the house. And I was telling someone the other day, it got to a point where... Little things that shouldn't bother you uh, bothered me. So, like, I'd walk past the oven and I'd see... Do you know, like, on an oven door, you've got two glass panels? Yeah. And I'd walk past it and I'd see a little bit of chicken, uh, like, chicken fat. It, in between? In the between. Th- I don't know how he's got in there. <clears throat> but I'd see it. And now, normally, if you're busy, you just go, oh, that's a bit annoying, you get on with it. But when you're not, you, you start... Oh, it, that going in there? How can I get that out of there? Yeah. I'm, I, I, I'm doing nothing else. I'm going to get that out of there. <laughs> That's what I'm going to do today. <laughs> and I take the door apart and then bits fall out. It's a really oh. complicated oven. It's not just like, I've had ovens where you can slide it out. Yeah. And you can just get clean it, put it back in. But this was like little special screws that I had to go and buy like a special, it's not like an Allen key, it's like a star. Right. A star like thing. Screw that out and it's small and it falls out and then you split it and something else falls out. It's like, I don't even know what that was in there for. And <laughs> and Suzanne came home and it was in bits and I had it balanced on the thing. And it's a, it had, so she was going, do, get a job again, do, do something. something. Because you, you wreck in the joint. Yeah. So it just goes to show that I, I've got to do something. I've got, I can't just sit there and watch films back to back. And I know there's loads of films you could, couldn't you? There's hey, endless no. amounts of films. No, I'm not saying I could do that. I would like to do that a couple of times a month, is right. what I'm saying. That would be enough in, enough for me to... That's, that's to, me to, time. To, well, to have time, just have time by yourself. I think everybody, people who are good at having time by themselves, I think deserve it and they kind of need a bit of that to spur themselves on. Yeah, I still haven't really found the thing, though, that if, if I'm not working, I don't know what what is me. Do you know, like, when people say, what are your hobbies or what do you do with spare time? Mm. You sort of go, oh, I don't know. I don't know what I do. I don't what is me. But do you think you're searching for that? Yeah. Yeah, I think, I mean, you've, you've got to have that because there is going to come a time when I'm not working. You can't work. You can't, yeah. So what, what are you going to do? I've, I've always put off um, classical music and reading for when I'm older. That's that, they're the two things I think, well, if, you, if, you, if your legs are knackered, your knees are gone, I'm going to be sat down. So what do you do when you do that? You can listen to music and you can read. I've hardly read any books. You see, you're quite an arty person and that, aren't you? I can imagine you 
these films you're watching. You're not, you're not watching Police Academy, are you? You're watching no, but stuff with subtitles. There's a time and place for Police Academy. <laughs> but, but I'm, you know, and that's not. Uh, but I imagine you can read and like get stuck into a book and that, can you? Well, do you know what's really hard? When, when I want to get stuck into a book and I've got loads that I, that I've got a list that I really want to get down there on my shelf. I bought them. I got there. There. So they will there. happen. I've got them. It will happen. It will happen at some point. But it's really hard because Kids. when you're at home. There's always something to do. Yeah. If I'm not doing this or I'm doing That's what I mean, script though. work, there's always something to do in there. But when your legs are gone, exactly. you've got the books. So maybe you've got a point. So that's uh, that's as far ahead as a planned uh, that, you know, um, classical music and uh, reading books when I'm older. Classical music and books for the, the last sort of 20 years. Yeah, I reckon. I reckon. There's enough books out there to see you through, so you'll be fine. Yeah, I just can't do it at the minute. Like you said, there's always something else to do. Um, my ears, my ears are pretty active. When I'm older, I'm guessing you get a bit deafer. So outside noises aren't going to be going, what's going on out there? What's happening? What's happening? You know, I'd be up and down when, if I try to read a book now, what's going on? Well, so I think that will work for me. Um, but at this moment in time, I wish I did have something, but you can't just, Suzanne says, yeah, but you don't know what you want to do because you don't do anything. You've got to put yourself in the thing. To, to find out if you it. want to do it. Yeah. But I can't quite get over that first hurdle. What Do you know anyone who does anything that you go, oh, I wish I had time for that? I don't know what... I don't know. To be... Uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't really know loads of people that go, well, that's my hobby and that's what I do. Yeah, but you, they must have it, because everybody goes on about, oh, wish I didn't have to work as much, wish I had more holidays, wish I had a... Well, everyone's wishing for this extra time. Mm. What, what are you meant to do with it, then? <laughs> have you actually thought about it? You're moaning about your job, saying it's taking up too much time, I haven't got time, I haven't got time. Well, what do you want the time for? <laughs> if you had that time, what would you do with it? And until you get the time, you realise that, Jesus, I don't know what I'm meant to do with it. Yeah. It's really weird. Well, that's what happens, isn't it, when some people retire and they go... Well, I, that's oh, what I mean. That's well, what I did. Now. That's what I did. Yeah. It's like, the, this is what everybody's told me is living the dream. You're not, you're not having to get up and go to work. And, uh, this is what everybody wants. And then I had it, and I think I handled it for six months. Six months before of I was just... like, cannot. I mean, I didn't. I never just sat there like... Mm, no, but that's the thing. There was. It's like the... the, the Piece of chicken fat in the door. There's exactly. always something. Something like that. There's a screw there. I've got to sand that down. I've yeah. got to repaint that. Yeah. I've got to re grout that. Yeah. I've got to do something. The lawn. Yeah. Chafer grubs are wrecking it. How do I sort that? Google. Get some nematodes. Right. I'll do that. But you can't keep, you know, fannying about. Yeah. Because that's all you end up doing. Yeah. And you don't really get joy from fannying about because you you know the thing you did didn't really need doing. So you get no joy out of doing it. Yeah. Because it didn't need doing. If anything, you've made it worse. Because you're doing it for the sake of yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but that was your decision to to stop the travel stuff. Wasn't yeah, because it? I thought I had it in my head. My dad, earn money, earn money. Don't owe money. Pay your way in life. Don't go on the dole. Da, da, da. I'd made the money. I'd bought the house. Right. What am I doing it for? And I always thought it was for the money. Right. But what came out of it is it wasn't about money. I just like keeping busy and doing something that it's something to do. So for someone who. Gets gets bored easily. Retirement is like ridiculous. Uh, fucking hell. Yeah. So you need to keep busy. I think everyone's got to keep busy. I always, every time I go, do you know, like people go, "What would Jesus do?" I don't say that. I look at what what insects do because they're they're like purer than us, aren't they? They haven't got. We've gone off the rails at some point. We were cavemen. We're smacking about, we're surviving, we're running after shit, chickens, cutting them up, cooking them on a fire, you're doing survival. We don't survive anymore, do we? <laughs> no. There's none of that. We've gone way off. I don't know what year, I can't pinpoint the point where nature, when I fucked up here, humans have gone way off. <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. More and more happens when you, you see what people do, pissing about on a jet ski. That was never, nature never intended humans to be doing that. So I always look at insects and go, look at them. They're always busy. Always, like, running about. You watch an ant, it looks like it's got way too much to do. It's weighing about, it's going that way, and it's going, shit, I've got to do that, and it's going back that way. And I think that's the same as us. We've got to keep... Yeah. We've got to do something. We've got to be busy. But that goes back to that, the need to have something and the want to have something, doesn't it? 
in a way. Like, we don't need to... We, we quite want to go on that jet, jet ski. We don't need to go on it. That's not going to do no, anything. No, and I wish the people who do go on it probably absolutely love it. But if you don't, I'm not going on that jet ski because I've got nothing else to do. <laughs> everything I do... The table tennis table. Yeah. Everything I do, I want... I want to... Really want to do it. Are you quite meticulous? I mean, like, I'm just going back about the lawn. You got really into the lawn. Yeah. Was that because... There was nothing else going on and you put all the energy into the lawn. Or if you're going to do something, you want it to be the best possible thing it can be. So I want that lawn to be the green. I didn't want to get all. beaten. It was like, these um, chafer grubs, they wreck a lawn. I don't know what their big purpose is in, in life. They haven't got anything else to do. It's their purpose to, to balls up, they eat the roots. Right. Uh, and then they come out of the ground, they fly about. They like these uh, shiny, they come out as like shiny little green beetles. And with me, on, I, I'm mental when it comes to me. I, I don't want to kill them. I can't, you'll never see me kill anything. I care more about insects and animals than people in some ways. Yeah. I'm like, I, I love watching them. I find them fascinating. Well, they are. Um, I suppose that's a bit of a pastime in some ways. You go, we might have a hobby at the end of this, Carl. Yeah, no, I, I do, do. I mean, again, drive Suzanne up the wall. If um, but When was it? Probably three nights ago, I was sort of trying to get a mozzie out of the house. And she was just, just hit it. I was going, I'm not just hitting it. You know, they're not, they're not carry, carrying um, malaria no. here. And I kind of think, you shouldn't kill it. If I can get it out, I'll get it out. If it's annoying you, I'll get it out. Um, and I did get it out. But she, and she was like, kill it. And I was going, you see, that's what you do. You'd kill it on a wall. It'd be full of blood or something. It's going to mark the wall. Then it's me who's got to get that blood off the wall. What I'm doing is I'm getting it out. So that doesn't happen. That doesn't happen. And also... And the thing's and happier. It, it can go off. It can go off and, and go it somewhere its else. life. Yeah. So I, all that's important to me, but um, I've gone off again there. So the lawn. Yeah, I like looking after... You see, it's funny, I'm busy again at the minute with this, and the lawn's gone a bit to shit because we had that hot summer, and it's all a bit dry, and I had the... Um, but I suppose what I was meaning about the lawn, you took so much care after that. If you're going in, someone goes, right, what do you think about writing a sitcom? Oh, well... Balance, isn't it? If, at the beginning, I liked it because... Because it was new. It was new and it wasn't full-time. It was three days and Suzanne was like, that's good for you, go and do that. Get when it started off, house. just do three days of writing. Go out, do three days, then come back and do the lawn. You'll enjoy doing the lawn more because you haven't been able to do it for three days. You know, ba balance is a big thing in life, yeah. isn't it? Do too much of any anything. Too much of anything is never good. So... Well, it's um, like you're eating the same... Same, Same lunch, yeah. uh, Monday to Friday. Yeah. <sighs> Sick of it. Yeah. Yeah. Even though that was your favourite thing? Was favourite on Monday. It's Friday now. Oh, fuck, I hate it. Yeah. I don't want it again. You've ruined it. In Ru fact, you've, done, you've ruined you've it. You've ruined it. I can never have yeah. that again. Yeah. So you've got to have a bit of badness to enjoy the goodness and that, haven't you? So, um... But you put that much care to into those three days of, of, say, writing this yeah. as you did... With the lawn? Yeah, to an unhealthy amount. Really? Where I'm getting annoyed. Why, why did I do this? When I'm struggling, I'm sat in a room with Richard, and we're struggling, coming up with ideas, and I write it down, I'm just like, oh, forget it. Forget it, Richard. I'm, I want to go home. I've got a lawn to sort out. Right. Forget it. And then it, it, he knows me quite well. Let's just go for a walk. Let's go, go for a walk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stretch, stretch, stretch clear your head. legs, clear your head. Come back, come up with a good idea. It's a brilliant idea. Oh, God, thank God, it hasn't been a waste of a day. One good idea. Right, right, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's good, right. See you tomorrow. I'll be walking home, walking to the flat. Mm, not that good, that idea. Oh, it's not that. In fact, it's shit. Sending Richard a text. Richard, Forget I don't it. like it. Forget it. We'll start fresh tomorrow. Actually, I've just had another idea. Let's do that. All right, yeah, that's not a bad idea. Next day, I get in the office. Yeah, that text you sent through, that's not a bad Oh, I've changed my mind again. Bin that one, I've got another one. And that's been the worst thing about um, having to go out writing something versus the travel stuff that I did. Because with the travel stuff, you'd get on a plane, you'd land somewhere, something would happen, I'd be in it, I'd get involved, I'd say what I thought, you get on a plane, you come home, that is it, it's over. There's no thinking about it anymore, yeah. it's gone. You can't say, I've got a better idea, can we... Well, no, you're not going to get on a plane that just so you can come up with a better idea it's gone yeah so in a way that kind of suited me because it was because in the writing. moment it's in the moment that's that's happened there's yeah. no control i've got no control whereas with this time 
the more time you've got, you keep going, yeah, that was good. Is it good? Yeah, it's all right. Is it? Well, it could be better. It's shit. It is shit. Jesus, rip it up. It's absolutely shite. So it's like what we were talking about before. You've gone right full circle. Yeah. Is that from overthinking? Is that yeah. from, from, from the worry as well? Overthinking is table tennis thing again, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It's, uh, just, just buy the table tennis. Well, no, it's good to think. Yeah, but you're overthinking. So it's a battle, isn't it? It's a battle with your own head. It's like, Jesus, what, when am I going to be at ease? Or is that just me? And if that is me, where's that come from? Where do you Why? think that, I don't think know. that has come from? I don't know. I don't know if... Um, I mean, something I didn't tell you with the school stuff. I was shit at school. I didn't... Um, and, I, you know, I, I know I said the early school was shit, and I, I suppose that'd be easy to blame the reason I didn't do well in that school. But then when I went to the next school, and the next school, it, I never did well. I was hopeless. Uh, not open to the education or... It just didn't work for me. Didn't compute? Didn't. Or, did you push it away, or was it? Did, did you want to try and learn? I was always <clears throat> the problem was at the beginning. I'd ask questions, but the teacher would be like, "What are you asking that for? That's not got. That's why are you asking?" So you were made to feel stupid. Well, for me, a conversation. We're having a conversation now, aren't we? Yeah. And it's interesting for us because we, it's a two-way thing. And we're in it. We're in it. You're keeping me interested. Hopefully I'm keeping you interested. Yeah. With a teacher, it's just like, bleh, they're just telling you all this stuff. And I, I put my hand up and you'd, you'd ask questions. And, all right, looking back, I can't think of loads of things, but maybe like today we're doing the alphabet or whatever, I'd be like, why is it in that order? Right, yeah. So the teacher's going, because it is. I go, well, yeah, but why? You know, uh, would it make it easy if it was any other order? So then when they're going, right, everybody, it's A, B, C, D, and I'd be sat there going, oh, would I change it? What order would I want it in? <laughs> so I'm not thinking about what's going on. I am thinking on the topic. Now, wouldn't that be good? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be better if all the kids could just... I know at some point someone's got to take control. Yeah. But just make it interesting. But wouldn't it be interesting if she's just... Well, that, isn't that interesting that you said that, Carl? Because why it's like this is because of this. It makes it even if he made something up. Yeah, it and just says, makes it easier. It makes it easier. Yeah, makes it easier. Then you'd have had resolution on your answer. Yeah, you'd go, and I'd oh, feel right. like I've been involved. I'm, exactly. I'm, 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 I'm in. I'm in here. Yeah, I've got. A, I'm, I'm, I've, I've added something. I'm, yeah. I'm part of this. But it was just like it's like that. And after a while, when you feel like you're annoying people, you just go into yourself, don't you? And yeah. you go, well, I'm not, I've got a question, but I'm not going to ask. Yeah. So All I'm just going to sit here. I've got nothing to contribute to this class, so yeah. I'm just going to keep my mouth shut. Yeah. yeah. So that kind of went on and on. And then um, I remember the ed teacher, the woman sort of said, um, told me mum and dad I was never going to be a high flyer. Right. What does that mean? What's high flyer mean? I think it just means like, uh, you know, well, I don't know. How do you, how do you, what does, yeah, what does yeah, it mean? How do you, is but those basically, words? yeah, that's what she said. God. Yeah, she said, basically, is is not great at this. Um, it's not going to be a high flyer. And um, I don't know, I suppose a part of, some people have sort of gone, that's bad. It's bad for a teacher just to have given up on you. Because they say a teacher's only as good as the worst pupil, don't they? Yeah. Because anyone can teach a brainy kid. It's how good are you with the with the thickos? And um, we hardly have to teach the brainy ones because they're kind of they're just sucking it up. They know about it. They probably know more about the teacher than they. Exactly. Yeah. So you know. uh, So, and a lot of people have gone. That's really bad that they did that. But in a weird sort of way, it freed me up because I knew there was no pressure on me anymore. My mum and dad weren't expecting anything. The teachers weren't expecting anything. So there's no pressure. Yeah. You know, like some kids now, they're stressing about exams and everything. Yeah. None of that. For me, I was like, the only reason I'm here, it was like a prison sentence school. I didn't look at it in any other way than the time will come when they go, you're free now. It was like, honestly, I, I got, I hated it. Hated everything about it. Um, apart from the making money. Yeah. You know, I wasn't going there to learn. I was going there to earn. Did you? <laughs> that's, that's, that's how I looked at it. Um, Did you have a good group of mates, though? 
How was that front? Yeah. Because I spoke to some people in not that dissimilar situations to you at school, and they go, I didn't care about the lessons. I just went for my mates. It was just like a social club for me. Yeah, but even that, I mean, I did. There's a Like I said, there's a couple who are still know now. Yeah. Um. But if I had a choice of doing that or doing paper rounds all day or something, I would have been on my own and done the... Yeah, mate, mates were about. Um, but like I said, it's hard, it was hard to have them... I didn't want them involved in my life that much because I found, like I've said, I find them a bit like they're going to annoy me at some point or I'm going to let them down or they yeah, 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 yeah. And then um, my dad worked nights, so I couldn't have them round. Of course. So I, I had a couple who I saw... There's a couple of little memories. I remember, like, other kids on the estate. Uh, I had one whose mum was really fussy about her house being clean. And um, he had a computer... Said X Spectrum or something that we used to play games on, and I wasn't allowed in his house because his mum was like, "Don't want anyone in with the dirty shoes." No, no, no. So he used to have to like play it through the window. He lived in a flat, <laughs> and I used to uh, stand there, sort of just out the window with a control thing playing a, a game. So it was that sort of relationship where I knew people, um, but they weren't a massive. And I just think, because you've got to answer right, haven't you? If you're asking me, I'm thinking back to mates. Got in a lot of fights. My dad pointed out at, at, like, a couple of months ago when we got talking about people who he remembers who were knocked about with. And he'd say, oh, you were always getting your head kicked in. And I never, that wasn't a memory of mine. But when he said it, and I was like, what do you mean? And then I remember, like, I did boxing for a bit at a youth club, just for something to do. Yeah. It was the time Rocky was out. And, um... I did that, and I remember like being outside there and getting absolutely battered by someone in the car park. And I can't remember why, but going home and my mum and dad seeing my head all sort of red and that, I'd have been clouted. Then there was another time when someone in the avenue was like laying into me, and my dad sort of saw it and came over. And he was going, yeah, you know, Steve was really like stamping on your head. And it was weird. It was kind of weird. I can't remember what it was all about, but I think... I, don't, I, I wasn't someone who's going about annoying people and looking for trouble. No. I don't know if it was, like, money, because I was, like... I, you Did know, they find out you were early? in the computer game. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know what it was, but... Um, yeah, I used to get, like, a bit of a kick in. Um, and I wasn't that good at fighting. Um, so, yeah, mates, mates. They were around. And I think if you... I had a magpie as well. I had a pet magpie. Did you? Yeah. Yeah, called Maggie. So that was another thing that sort of, I was happy with with that. That was like a bit of a thing for me to do and look after. But then again, in the end, the commitment thing happened where it got too much. It was there all the time and it was relying on me and yeah. I didn't like it. And I suppose in a way that's why I don't like people relying on me too much, whether it's a person or a bird. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, that got violent. That used to have a go at me after a while. It got a bit confident, pecking at my head and popping <laughs> my bike tyres and that. Right, you're gone. So it was, um, yeah, mates, mates. They were around, and I got on with them, and then they'd sort of disappear, and there'd be someone else. Yeah. And, uh, so what? when you said the pressure was off at school, mm. when they said all that, press off you, press off the teacher, press off your mum and dad, how did that, did that make you... Obviously freer, but did it make your work... Were you less judgmental about your work? It, it, what, from, the school work? Like, from an education point of view, work. or do you just go, right, press is off, I'm not doing now or that? Um, it was always tidy. My work always looked good. I liked neat writing. I used to do it over a ruler. Do you know, like, I had a ruler and writing on it, so it's in a straight line. Yeah. So I liked everything being neat, and I, I was good at drawing as well. That's another memory. When you said, what did you do when you were younger? I used to draw a lot. Love drawing. Uh, it's, it's sort of something I used to do with my mum as well, just like doodling and like... Um, you still do it now, draw? Yeah, yeah. Not to Nothing to keep. It's always like, do a quick drawing, get rid of it. Get, what, I don't want to keep literally it. literally get rid yeah, of it? Yeah, shred it. Um, but on different levels, sometimes I'll spend more effort on something, sometimes it's just a, a cartoon. Um, at the beginning, it used to be on a bit of wood. Do you know, what's that wood called that you have on um, for wardrobe and stuff? It's like shiny, shiny white. Formica. Like Formica. And my mum had bingo pens, you know, the sort of thing. Yeah. So you could write on the on the Formica stuff, you could draw and stuff, and then I'd just do 
really simple, almost like Lowry style things, just football fields, kids playing, old person walking with a stick, dogs running about, someone chucking a stick for a dog. It was just life that I did. I mean, mum used to do the same and we'd both do that and then you could wipe it off. Start again. Start again. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, the drawing, um, I used to use drawing in my work to try and make it look better. All the work was wrong. Yeah. But it would have good drawings to go with it, but they'd sort of go, well, we can't give you a good mark. Looks nice. It, it looks nice, but it's all wrong. Yeah. Um, and it got to a point where it was just, I didn't understand it. It wasn't even like, do you know when you get to that point, what age is it when they start introducing letters into maths? Got to be 13, 14. You forget it. Yeah. Forget it. Why, why, are, why are letters getting involved? There's shit loads of numbers. We don't need to add that. And at that point, I just, I knew that. I've even got to a point, I don't understand it. And I know that I don't, I'll never need this. So I really felt like I don't know what I'm doing here. But it's right. You, um, will, you, will, you will never need it. No. Um, and then I think even the teachers got sick of teaching because all the lesson ever seemed to be was printouts of things. Yeah. So Stick that in your book. We weren't even really This teaching. is the history. This is everything about Henry VIII. Read it's that. There. Read that and stick it in the book. And you couldn't read it because it was a shit photocopier. So everything was like, it looked like it had been in a washing machine. <laughs> yeah. You know, like a shopping list in a washing yeah. machine and that. And you just go, I can sort of make something out. But So <laughs> out, what am I meant to do with this? So they don't give a shit. I can't read it. Um, I, don't know what, I don't know what we do. I'm just collecting paper every day. I'm yeah. basically going into classes, you're giving me bits of paper that I can't read, and I'm going home. I, there was nothing I enjoyed. Um, I mean, do you think that was of a time? Because I had teachers like that, who literally came in with the shit photocopier, stick it in your book, and they would read. Just read from a book. They don't care. No. That's not teaching. No, it was just, how can we get through the next half hour? Yeah. We're keeping these kids And I've got my busy. coffee, I've brought my coffee in. You're yeah, you allowed, read it. Uh, you're not allowed to eat and drink. Yeah. Yeah. I th- a big turning, I suppose the one thing that did happen, because I don't want, listen, I don't want to be one of them people who's like, it's all the school, it's the school's fault. I know it wasn't. It's, at the end yeah, of the but day. I don't think you're saying that. You're giving, uh, you're talking about balance again. You're giving both sides. Yeah. There was kids in there who were probably, none of them have gone off and inv- done anything amazing, but... They're all right, and some of them learned some stuff, and it got them to where they want to be. But um, it just wasn't for me. But there was one point when one of the teachers got me to do public speaking. Because now and again, I've wondered how did this all happen? Like what? what uh, and maybe that was her way of like giving me something, or seeing something. Seeing something. You. She must have seen something. And it was a competition thing. And are we all right for time on that? Are we? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, she said, we're all doing public speaking in the class. Yeah, oh, a few of us were picked, and it was a school thing, like all the classes were having to do this, and it was all going to build to a winner of public speaking. Like in an assembly? Yeah, like, yeah. yeah, just after assembly. It was kind of like the teacher would be there and go, oh, you know, dog shit's a problem, watch where you step in, and now here's the public speaking thing. Right. Um, <laughs> so... I, uh, she gave me a thing to do and I was like, oh, what about? She's like, anything. You can talk about anything. Just tell us a bit about your life. And and I, oh, and I didn't plan anything because I'd, you know, homework and everything. I just, I didn't really do any of that. So I turned up and she's like, it's today. Um, you write so-and-so, do your public speaking. I'm sat there thinking, shit, I mean, thought about this. <laughs> shit. <laughs> And got that little thing, you know, like, oh. yeah. <laughs> you can feel your heart going faster and everything. I'm not even listening to what's being said, thinking in my head. Anyway, so I'll go up and I just talk about, um, see, it's funny because you said about, you know, did you have mates and that, but I had this mate, Carl Grimshaw, and I just went up there and I, I think I talked about stuff we'd just been doing. And which, I, I can't, I, to this day, I, I have no idea what it was that yeah. I was talking about, but it was just our relationship and, like, stuff he's done, daft things he'd, he's done. And he was in the class, and so everyone knew him, so yeah. everyone could relate to it. Oh, so you the, named him? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And um, and everyone, like, I don't know how long he had to do, but it was quite long. Uh, and 
and it went well, and I quite enjoyed it, and everyone sort of clapped at the end, and like, wee, you know. How did, oh, that feel, how did that feel, getting the, the ad, it was, adoration It was from weird, because that was a really new, really yeah, new I was going to say. Really, like, yeah, I didn't know what, what, what to expect in that, and I felt good, but I don't know if it was just because, oh, I've done it. The like, relief, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but maybe I did actually enjoy it. But I, for me, it was just like, I did it. Anyway, I'd sort of um, won in our class the public speaking thing, which meant that I had to do it again. Right. Right? Um, but this time, rather than me being allowed to do what I want to do, it was... Uh, oh, there was a topic. Ah, How did that make you feel? Did you feel less free? Well, it was about a pen. What? R- talk about a pen. And I was like, ah, what? Now, I enjoyed the freedom of talking about, I could put everything into the thing I talked about because it was me. Suddenly, I suppose it's them going, right, you were good at that and you're great at that. But And, and I suppose, thinking back, it's them going, can you think outside the, the box. box here? But I thought, Which you've already been doing. Well, well they have, yeah, yeah. Yeah, really? Yeah, yeah. But then they said at Penn, and I was like, oh, God, What? So I'm getting proper stressed out about this. I've never had this pressure like this on me. And um, I turned up, and it was in the assembly. I'd got to the stage where it was like, the, you know, it got to that stage where then it was now five all doing their thing and some of them were talking. You know, they all had topics. Yeah. And I struggled and I was trying to make it interesting. I, I picked a pen that was in um, in a bank, you know, and it's chained and yeah. It's not free, and I can't remember much about it. But it was like trying to make it interesting that this pen. I, I can't remember. It was shit because it, it was always going to be shit because it's not what I wanted to talk about. I tried to make it this sort of interesting thing. How these other pens that are doing this, that, and the other, and, uh, but this one's chained. And yeah, it's, uh, and um, nothing, nothing. I'm getting nothing. No. no one's enjoying it. All these, you know, everyone's kind of. <laughs> you can hear them not losing interest. A teacher doing that sort Slow of thing. I, I, I mean, it was just, I, it could have destroyed me. It was one of those things that the teacher had done really well making me do this public talking thing. And then it's like they give me a pen to talk about. And uh, I hated it. It was just any, any, th- any good that came out of the public speaking thing then probably knocked me back years. More so than hearing the teacher saying, he's never going to be a high flyer. Yeah. It was this thing that they give me something, I found something, then just poof, knocked me right back yeah, down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, yeah, I, I, I don't know how we got into. Oh, oh, yeah, I was just trying to think of what kind of got me into, into the work, thing of kind liking, of where we are. liking where we are. Yeah. yeah, but that was a big moment there. I suppose a, a moment where at school it had finally got me interested. But then, and kind of didn't knocked last. it out of you again. Yeah, and yeah. I just couldn't wait to get out of there. And I left school. I left school early. I didn't do all the exams. I didn't turn up for them. And my plan was to get a job before everyone else left. At my 16. Thing was, well, everyone was leaving at 16. I left before then. I left. When people were doing exams, I'd left. Right. Because I thought, I'm going to go out and get a job before everybody comes out and nicks the jobs. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> And I got a job at a printer's, and um, and it wasn't until like twenty odd years later, when I was doing the radio show with Ricky and Steve, that they got in touch with the school and found out about my exam results and that. And all I got was an E in history. Really? Yeah, got an E. And it was like, what else did you take? And I was like, uh, I did geography, I think. And they were like, no, you didn't do you didn't do geography. You know, I, I had no like. Can't remember what you turned up no, for and what you didn't. No. Nothing, and that's it. So after all that time, all that waste of time, an E in history, which is of no use to me. I mean, I'm surprised I got an E in history, you know, in a way, because <laughs> yeah. I don't know, I don't know how I manage that. But some of them obviously didn't turn up for because I had no interest. My mum and dad weren't the sort who thought exams were important. They weren't. They weren't to them. You know, it doesn't to anyone. So it's just like, get a job, get a job. So the fact that I got a job in a printer's, my mum and dad were happy with that. And whilst I was doing that, I was always interested in um, radio. And that was that was the first, probably 
like a, a passion thing that I'd always been there and I didn't realise. Like when I said to you that I'd sit there drawing, yeah, the radio was always on. Right. Um, obviously well, even when you we, were doing the paper round, you had the radio. I had the radio, on, yeah. yeah. I like listening to the local yeah. radio station and that. So I like music and um, and the chat, like hearing people chatting to themselves. I suppose it's that thing again. It's kind of, you can say your thoughts out without someone else having to be there. Yeah. It's quite just free- I, I mean, it's quite freeing. It's really freeing. Yeah. It's a bit mental, sat in a room talking it, to yourself. It can be if we overthink it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know that well again. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but did you, was there any point here at that at that time where you, you loved the radio? But did you think, oh, this could be some sort of career? Yeah, I mean, I was at, still at school when that was floating about because I remember when I saw the careers advisor and they said, right, Carl, what do you want to do? And I went, I want to be on the radio. And it was like, yeah, that's not going to happen. And they sent me to Quicks for Ford, you know, for two weeks or whatever. And maybe back then it wouldn't happen. I mean, these days, media studies and all that, there was none of that stuff back then. It was like, you think you're going to get on the radio? No chance. So again, but it's a bit like the teacher, that, like, not that, a high flyer. What does that do Does that do to the kids? I don't know. I don't right, know. you've just crushed everything. Yeah, I don't... Or is it being realistic and... I don't think so. Why, why, who, who's anybody to say, actually, no, you can't do that? Well, do you know what? Go and try it. Yeah, but I wonder, why, why right? Do you know, you like today's kids, and I haven't got kids, I don't know what you're meant to do, but say if I've a got, kid... I've got a kid, I still don't know what you're meant to do. I know, well, that's it, isn't it? Is it good to build them up and go, what, you want to go on a moon? Go to the moon, sunshine. But the chances of going to the moon are slim. <laughs> so do you make it realistic and go, you're not going to the moon, get a fucking job, right? Or are you, what are you meant to do? Because a lot of people said the, the head teacher shouldn't have said he's not going to be a high flyer, but I use that. I used that, didn't I? Yeah. It's to, like, just, fine. To go. Free then. No yeah. pressure. So the same when they said, you're not going to be on the radio, I could have gone, oh, really? But I didn't. I went, well, all right, you're not going to do it, but I'll somehow. I'll find somebody else. Up. Well, that's good. Yeah. So I suppose what happens now is the people who re- then was, the people who really wanted the thing they want, they worked at it and they still got it. Today, maybe people think they want it and they get it easy and then they realise... They don't want it, but it was handed to them. Yeah, but for somebody like yourself, that was useful for them to go, yeah, you're not going to be on the radio. Go get yourself to quick for it. And you used it to your advantage. There might be another kid that they said that to, and they went, all oh, right, yeah, well, I can't do that. I'll just go and do this. And they're probably constantly thinking, now, that's what I really wanted to do was go and be on the radio, but I'm still stuck in the printers for the rest of my life. Yeah, well, should have tried harder, because I didn't give up. So I got the job that they could have had. <laughs> You've always got to have a level, haven't you? There's it's always. A, well, it's do you a know when people again, go on these days that it's not fair? We're not all getting the same. I sort of go, well, that's not life. You've always, you're always going to have top, middle, bottom. Yeah. Whether it's rich people, there's going to be someone richer. Yeah. Someone other. It's always got to have. You've got to have all these things. Like when people used to go on about, you know, so and so is a criminal. It's really bad. He's, he's a scum. He's scum. He's no use to society. But then you go, well, hang on a minute. If he wasn't robbing shit, we wouldn't need police. So that's helping someone out. You need lawyers for the court things. You need in a, if it in a perfect world, it, it wouldn't work. What's everyone end, doing? You've got, you've got a few new directors. Yeah. So yeah. Go, everybody's yeah. getting no, a job. You've got to have everyone playing a part. So everyone's not going to get to what they want, but maybe along the way they'll do something else that's needed. You know, some of us have to empty bins because the bins need emptying. You know, I, I, but it's about how much do you want the thing and I like that I had to work really hard for it and that they didn't send me on a placement. Maybe if they sent me on a placement, I might not have enjoyed that Exactly time. where you were, so it would have and been a catalyst have for something else. Yeah. yeah. Oh, just bang the lamb, that was yeah, nice, wasn't nice. it? nice. <laughs> um, so it's worked out well. And so I what did you do next? What did you do when you went right out? You, you're radio. not going to help us out with the radio. Where did it you was, go? It um, was my dad had a heart operation in Withinshore Hospital. And... Um, I was in there, a lad came round and said, any requests, any requests, any songs you want playing? I was like, what's, what's this? What, what do you mean, any songs? He's like, oh, this hospital radio. Uh, what? what? How's that work? I said, well, you know, play songs and uh, take requests and that and do a two-hour show. Did you get paid? I like, no, you just do it for free. All right. Is that hard to get into? He's like, it's voluntary, just, you know. So I wrote a letter into them. Um... 
said, I'm interested in radio. Can I, can I have a go? And they said, well, it's not as easy as that. You've got to come in and uh, help out a bit and go around the world to collect requests for the person who does the request show. And But I did all that. Sort of start and, uh, at the bottom. Yeah, you got to start at the bottom. Yeah. And then I, I remember doing, I, you had to read the news and I was shit. I remember laughing. There was some story about someone getting it on the head with a golf ball. <laughs> and you, you, you never give respect to news readers because, <laughs> do you know when you you know you shouldn't laugh? Yeah. So you don't think of that when you're watching like Fiona Bruce saying that. <laughs> um, <laughs> So I did that, and they said, you can't do the news. I went, well, I didn't really want to do the news. You made me do the news. It's a bit like the public speaking thing again, being made to do something and then being shouted at for not doing it right. So I'm like, it's not what I wanted to do anyway. But anyway, I got a show, and I did that, and then um, me and a mate there, there's a few of us there, and we got kicked out because he'd made a transmitter, and we did pirate radio from there. Really? In the evenings, we used all the equipment <laughs> to do pirate radio. We got found out, so they kicked us out of there. But whilst I was in there, I met someone who used to help out a presenter at Piccadilly Radio in Manchester. And he was moving and said, listen, do you want to take over my thing of helping out? Do you get paid? No. Voluntary, yeah. Uh. But it's like, all right, I'll get my foot in the door. Yeah. So I was working at a printer's at this point. Hated it. It was a YTS job. Still Uh, that same printer's that you, when you left school? uh, Yeah. 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 Yeah, well, I did move printers eventually to get a bit more money. But yeah, the first one was a YTS thing. And I think I was still there when I was doing the hospital radio stuff. It's a little bit of money. Not where you get 25 quid a week, don't you, on the YTS thing. But I, I had this, you know, going into a proper radio station now. You know, real. The station I listened to. You know, I couldn't, I couldn't believe me. Look, yeah. it's like seeing the presenters who I listened to. And I was like, oh, no, there's, there's Mike Sweeney and this one there. And, um, doesn't, look, doesn't look like what he no, sounds like. No, definitely not. Yeah. <laughs> um, and that's the other thing, isn't it? Back then, that was like that. Now you can find everything out about presenters and everything yeah. on radio. It's not as special. Well, also, because they're not just on the radio. No, they're like, all, oh, like, they're most all of them on the, the telly before the radio now. Exactly, doing everything. So, um, so yeah, I was in there helping out. And um, is this boring? No. Um, doing that. And then I got got in a bit more, starting to know people in the station, got the job of um, putting out pre-recorded shows. There was shows at the weekend that presenters recorded because they work in the week, so the one at the weekend was pre-recorded. Yeah. They needed someone to put it out. So I'd be doing that. I'd, like, get the reel-to-reel tapes, playing these tapes out, putting in the adverts, going up to the news, back-timing it to the news. Gonna... So, and I'd get, um, I'd get cash for that. And I'd spend, like, the whole weekend there, like because there's loads of pre-recorded shows. I'd be there from 8 in the morning till, like, honestly, the whole weekend, I wouldn't go home. I'd, I'd, it wasn't worth going home. Yeah. Because it'd be like, get me head down for two hours before the next one goes out, because there was two stations in there. Right, okay. Um, so I was doing that. Anyway, one day I turned up, and um, the tapes weren't there for this show. But... Stuff's, the show's got to go on, hasn't it? Yeah. You know what I mean? Is that the saying? Well, the show must go the on. The show must go on, yeah. Who said that? I don't know, somebody in the theatre. I'm not that knowledgeable. All right. Um, <laughs> Freddie Mercury as well, didn't he? He sang about he it. He sang, show he did sing about that. On. And that's, that's in my head. It's like, it's got to go on. So I'm looking, looking for the tapes. It's not there. Right, well, I know what I'm doing. I know how to use the equipment. CD on, news is on, my heart's going, I'm doing, doing a show here. And was nobody else there? No, it was the weekend, there's no one about. It's like presenters and pre-recorded shows. It's like, like what, can, what can you do? Yeah. I don't know the boss's number. What are you meant to do in that situation? So you use your initiative, you're going to do your own show. show's got to go on, it. Right? show must go on. Sit there, <laughs> put the CDs in, I'm doing it. I'm just doing it and it feels really natural because I've been using the equipment for, for ages yeah. doing pre-recorded shows. All this... Um, there's, an, there's a special phone line in the studio that um, used to flash. The only thing I heard about it was, if there was going to be a bombing, that's the number the IRA would call you on. Right. So it's flashing, I'm going, oh, God, is that them? I prefer not to answer it. Because <laughs> my thing was, if it was them, if I don't answer, they might not do the damage, because kind of, they haven't told anyone. But anyway, it's, it keeps going, and I'm like, oh, I've got to answer it. I answer it, and it's the boss. I'm going, what's going on? I'm like, um, who are you? You know, because oh, he's God. at that level. Yeah, of course. He's at that level where he's not dealing with someone who's putting out pre-recorded shows. Yeah. It's Carl, what the look are you doing? Uh, yeah, I came in to um, put out the tape of uh, this fellow called Tony the Greek. He used to play new music and stuff. I said, the tapes should have been there, and they're not. 
Well, what were you playing at? Why don't you call anyone? I said, I haven't got any numbers. I, I thought it's better than just leaving dead air. <sighs> All right, then. Carry on. You know, blah, blah. I'm like, great. Right. So I did it. And I remember there was a complaint. Someone came in at one point because I said something about putting paraffin on a barbecue. For, I, don't, I can't remember what I said, <laughs> but the newsreader fella came in and shouted at me. And I think he was a bit annoyed because he was a, someone who wanted to be on, but... Didn't get the break. I think I think that's why he was sort of making me scared that someone's going to complain about all this. So, but anyway, I did it, and um, because I'd done it once, it was almost like a. I became this thing that if people were sick or whatever on the late night show, well, he's done it once. You might have let him, get him do in. it again. Yeah. So that's kind of how I got on the air, and that that kind of lasted. I got my own show two till six through the night for about a year and a half, I think. And then Did it the feel very natural to, to talk for the first time? Yeah. Yeah, it did. I enjoyed sort of... Um, I mean, I can't think back to that very moment. I got through it and I thought, oh, that was, that was good, that was easy. And, and remember, I'd be... See, I've, I've jumped things here. I did mobile DJing as well. Did you? Yeah, to make money again. Because that's when I was into radio and I was into music. And it's like, how can I use this? And I bought, like decks double like it was all in one big case like a couple of decks and a mixer yeah so i did i did that so i'd been in front of crowds again there but not too close it was like it's funny because it's like that's like having a night out without having a night out (laughs) so i was having a night out without having to be with people yeah i had my own little space playing songs I like. And you're in complete control, in control. of what's going on. So it's always been controls, another thing, isn't it? Yeah. That's, that crops up a lot with me. So it's like, it worked for me and making money, decent money again, young age, uh, doing social clubs, weddings, uh, stuff in churches, fundraising stuff. Um, again, anything to earn the money. Yeah, well, yeah. But at least you're, you know, you, but you're doing stuff that doing you're happy with. Yeah, enjoying it and making money. I mean, yeah. how good's that? That's, That's the like dream, the dream. So, um, so where was I? So, yeah, so I did the radio. And, got your own uh, show, 2 till 6. Got my own six. show, 2 till 6. That went all right for a bit. I was knackered as well because... Oh, I can't be bothered explaining that. Anyway, <laughs> 2 till 6. And then, um, <laughs> then I got sacked for... Um, talking too much and, and they were right they were right it was a station that was meant to be a most music station right you know they what you to talk four times an hour um was it quite regimented that horrible right it's like what am i what am i doing here well, that's what's, not free what am i here it? for it's yeah shit. um so i didn't listen yeah. to it and I, I kind of thought well i'm on through the night they're not going to know what i'm doing and well, there was did. one one time when the boss the station was in the center of town and the boss came in one night, um, he was a bit into parties and that. So he used to hang up, get, you know, have, a, have parties in town and then he'd come back and just kip on a sofa in right, the smoking okay. room. And I remember seeing him and thinking, oh, God, what's he doing in? I've got a show to do in a bit. Is he hanging around? And I saw him, like, get on the sofa and think, ah. Oh. And, and the thing is, the output of the station's coming out of speakers. Yeah, oh, I can't do what I want tonight. He's going to like be keeping an eye on me and that. And I remember um, doing the links, you know, talking between songs and sort of whispering. He was going right back to when my dad was on nights. Right. Kind of, oh, oops, I just yeah. banged the table. Took me right back to when my dad on nights and, um, you know, talking quietly because I didn't want to wake my dad up in the same way I didn't want to wake the, the boss up. Yeah. So I'm there. And, uh, anyway, I did this today. And I went, people calling up, what were you whispering for? Oh, Fucking Bob no. Harris. So... <laughs> It was, um, I went, oh, the boss is in. The boss, I can't, you know, he's, if, if I wake him up. I mean, this is mental. Um, and, uh, and I got away with it on that occasion and it was no problem. But then the, the, the boss started doing this thing with like Snoop tapes, they were called, and where they just randomly pick a show at random and listen to the cassette of the oh. show. And they'd get you in and you'd have to sit there and listen to it. Oh, all together? Yeah. Oh, fucking no. And he was, like, looking at his watch, like, basically saying, how long is this? You've been talking now for about three minutes. Uh, should play the song. Oh, you know, really, like, laying it on, yawning, nodding his head. And, um, yeah, got sacked. It's like, we've warned you. This isn't what we want. You haven't changed. And, and he's right. I mean, at the end of the day, if they're taking something one way and I wasn't fitting in... So that was kind of the end of that. 
but I got on with presenters there and they put a word in and said, you know, I know Carl's not right for on air, but he could produce. He came up with ideas and, um, you know, answer phones, make promos and stuff for the different shows. So people who I got on with there kind of got me a job back in. Yeah. Did you feel at the time that you weren't right for being on air? (sighs) Or was there something in you that went, oh, no, I think I, I could do this? But in a less sort of prison environment. I think it was just that time when radio, it's gone back again now. You know, you listen to Six Music, people can make the shows their own. Mm. But it was that time when radio, I don't know if it was American radio or something, where you had to sound a certain way. Yeah, exactly. And they played songs saying, well, what's the weather doing? I was like, coming up on a thing, isn't it? And tell, it's all people, tell people the time at Yeah, the weather. Time. Keep telling them the, the weather. weather. We're in Manchester, it's raining. It's yeah. fucking raining. It's raining again tomorrow. <laughs> you know, there's nothing to do. Why do they want to hear the weather? They want to forget about the weather. But it was that sort of upbeat, everything's good in the world. Even if it's not going to be sunny, say it's sunny. Yeah. It's just like, you know, playing the hits. Uh and I just was like, this isn't what I got into it for anyway. So in a way, I had a bit more freedom in making some of the trails and things. It was a bit more creative, I suppose, uh, selling something that was shit, but trying to make it seem better than it is. Yeah. And um, I did enjoy that. And that's kind of, you know, that was there for a long time. I did that job for quite a long, you know, few years at Piccadilly and then... Steve Penk, who did the breakfast show at the time. What radio station are we on now? It was called Key 103. Key 103, right, yeah. okay, I thought you were. Key 103, and there was Piccadilly Gold at the time, which is an older station. And, um, um, yeah, then Steve Penk came to London to work on Capital, and he said, look, they're giving me a different producer, but I'll put a word in, you know, and, and he did. And uh, I came down. And you got and, it. Uh, and got, I didn't work with him. They ended up sending me to a station in Kent to do training because all the equipment's different and right. everything. But, um, but yeah, it, it, it's... I mean, a lot happened there. I can't remember all of it and stuff. But it's kind of... It all led to being put with Ricky and Steve, which, again, opened up a lot of new doors. And because I, I, the radio thing was a thing I always wanted, but once I'd got that out of the way, I was almost free again. Like, well, I've done the dream what I'm meant to do now. And because I never had a plan, I was open to sort of stick my head into different things and go, oh, what's this? Oh, yeah, I could have a go at this. Yeah. I'll have a go at that. Which, again, is good because a lot of kids study for one thing and that's what they're going to do and there's no freedom. And there's a lot. And all that, there's a line. And, and my, it might you go don't. up a little bit. But, no, but it's but, more or less the same. Whereas me having that thing of, well, I can have a go at anything. And if I fail, it doesn't matter because no one's expecting anything anyway. So, I've always... So do you think you've grown with confidence then? Yeah. I sometimes wonder if it's the jobs that have given that confidence or is that just something that happens with age? Well, I don't know, because they're all so different. I mean, they're all very creative in a way and you you seem to have more control, going back to the control of... Yeah, the control's always that, important. I mean, important. I've been offered other jobs in this sort of... Uh, you know, TV world and radio, and I've not done them because it seems a bit like, well, it's not really mine. I'd be playing a part in that, and I've, then I'm not. I or you'd be freedoms or somebody there. else would want you to be Do a certain something that, way. Yeah, again, somebody's perception of, well, Carl does this, yeah. so we'll get him in to do this and we'll have control over yeah. him and we'll tell him what to do. I tried but- voiceovers for a bit and I couldn't do it because I sound like this, and then they get you in and go, can you sound happier? <laughs> It's like, why have you got mean? <laughs> so I, I, I gave up. I can't do different. Do you know what I mean? I can't. It is do what that it is. It is what yeah. it is. So all that, whenever other people get involved that you don't really know, it's never. It's going back to the mates thing again, isn't it? It's yeah. that thing of me going, hang on, I don't know them. They're trouble. Oh God, they're asking me to do something, and you don't want to be known as someone who's awkward in that, do you? No, but it's about trust as well, because you want to try and do the best thing you can yeah. do, and but you're not, you don't want to piss them off. So it's easy just to cut that, just go, that isn't for me. I can't do it. Yeah. So I don't want to piss them off. Don't want to piss me off. Won't do it. So I am. I do restrict myself as to things that could, I could have done, but I tend to find something along the way that does work. Or that is for me. I might overthink it for a bit. I don't just go, yeah, I'll do that. I'll go home. I'll think about it. Mention it to Suzanne. You could I do this? Well, you could do. Have a go. Everything. I'm never. I always run it by Suzanne. Whatever it is, I think. 
what do you think? You know me more than me. Yeah. Because she does, really. But doesn't that help when you've got a soundboard? It's brilliant. Not, I to, think... not to be disrespectful to Suzanne, but, to, you, know, you know, it's great to, to bounce ideas off somebody and go, what do you think? Because you do, you're right, you know me yeah. better than I know I, me. I definitely. Which I don't know if that's the right way around or if that's a healthy way, but she does. I'm, I'm always somewhere else in my head. I'm not always... And she's always been right. She's always sort of, you know, even the travel stuff that before I started that, I was worried about it. It was never a plan. I didn't want to go travelling. I never thought I'd leave Manchester. So this travelling around the world, you know, I remember at school when they're teaching you French, and I'm like, what's the point of this? I'm never going to need I'm that. Never, huh? That's never going to come in handy. Yeah. Um, and yet, you know, down the line, travelling about. But I remember uh, just going, do it. These are, you're going to go to places that you are never going to go to. Yeah. Without a doubt, you'll never want to go to India or China. So go. You're getting paid for it, and you go and see it, and you're never going to go back. You don't have to go back, and if you don't, see it. And if you don't like the place, what's the matter? worst that's going to happen? Yeah. And I remember just going, yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe. And then did it, and I thought it'd be a one-off series. Nobody would watch it. Die on its arse. But I've been paid as an experience. You know, I, that's, that was my attitude going into it. It's just like... It's not going anywhere, but yeah, I'm going to go. And it's funny how that sort of, you know, led to the next probably five or six years yeah. of stuff. But I'm, that was never a plan. That was never a plan. Well, sometimes it's all right not to have a plan, isn't it? This, this, things like having a plan comes up loads when I'm talking to people, going, no, no, I didn't have a plan, and I just sort of rolled with it. But if I hadn't have done that that I wasn't too sure about doing, then it wouldn't have sort of leapfrogged onto that and so forth. Yeah, so, sometimes. And then, the, and then the domino effect comes. Yeah. And, oh, well, everything, it all does. Not that I'm a massive fan of the phrase, it all happens for a reason, but you can't regret doing that because then it wouldn't have led no, on to the it other. No, it's good because a lot of people stick on the path, don't they? Yeah. They go, that's what I want to do and I've got to do this to get there. It's, they're doing it the sat-nav way. Type yeah. it in, type it in where I'm going, I'm yeah. going, I'm doing it right, I know where I'm going. Whereas if you're a bit lost... Well, I'm going to do a left here. Why? I don't, I don't know because I don't know where I am. And I've got, I've just, well. Uh, so I'm going to do I've There's a left. Made, I'm allowed. Yeah, it's, yeah you're a allowed a left. To be made. I'm going to do a left. I'm and you go down and you go, oh, what's down here? Yeah. And then you go down there and you go, fuck, where am I going here? Well, you best do a right. It's a dead end. Do a right. <laughs> and you do the right. And it's the right that takes you to something that you wouldn't have done yeah. if you'd have gone the other path. So you've got to sometimes, you know, when people sort of say, oh, I'm a bit lost, it's like, well, that isn't a bad thing. That no. means you can just you're open, and also sometimes when you're lost, you can get a bit of clarity yeah. in the situation and your situation. Yeah, but it's weird, isn't it? Because people aren't allowed to get there because words like being lost is seen as a negative, isn't it? Yeah. When sometimes it's the best. Being lost is like the restart. Yeah. So you know, it's a nice way to end it. Uh-huh. Carl. That's quite profound. It's a beautiful way to end it. Cheers, mate. Was that all right? Did you enjoy it? Yeah, I did, yeah. It was good, that. Do you think you'll need an hour's perspective before you can tell me whether you did enjoy it or not? Uh, well, I'm going to now, yeah, uh, phone me. Phone me on, like, uh, what day are we on now? <laughs> Thursday. Yeah, give us a text on Monday. <laughs> and another episode is done. What a top fella Carl is. I really hope you enjoyed that. And uh, I bet you're pleased you didn't go to a school like Carl's did. Sounded pretty grim. Um, uh, yeah, Carl, if you're listening, I can't thank you enough for coming on. Um, I loved it. I loved sitting down and talking with Carl. Um, we knew each other a tiny little bit, but we never had like a couple of hours just sitting down and nattering. Uh, of course, starting off with a bit of a moan. I thought I'd have been easy and gently, you know. Um, but then, yeah, we just went down to it. I loved it. It was brilliant. I could have happily done another couple of hours. But we had a busy day that day. And we, oh, yeah. Anyway, we had another three episodes to record, I think, that day in London. So it was a it was a heavy, heavy day on the ears and on the mind. Um, but some absolutely brilliant episodes coming your way, trust me. Um, if you like what we do, you can join us. You can send us messages on Twitter at Two Shot Pod, Instagram, Facebook, email if you want, Two Shot Pod at gmail.com. You see, I've got it down now. Um, if you really like it, now you know that we give you four episodes a month, every Thursday, for free. They're always going to be free, right? But if you, if you want, if you can chuck us a few quid, we're Patreon, 
we're on Patreon, right? Patreon.com slash two shot pod. Click that link, go there. There's a lovely video of me and Griff having an atta. Well, not so much Griff, he's the, the strong, good looking, silent type. And I'm the gobby one. So go there, it'll explain everything. Think of it like if you uh, if you saw me and Griff in a pub and you went, hey, I like your podcast, fancy a pint, we'd go, yeah, please. Instead of that, uh, just throw us, throw us a few quid. But then again, saying that, if you do see us in the pub, then I'm sure we'll, we'll gladly take a pint off your hands. But that's it. No more waffle, no more episodes. We are done. It's a brilliant, brilliant episode. I'm, I'm really thrilled that, that you tuned in for it. I know there's a lot of anticipation for it. And remember, Sky One is the place you need to be. 27th of September, that's when Carl's sitcom kicks off brand new direction for Carl. No more traveling, no more putting in a situation he doesn't want to be in. This is a thing that is co-written with Richard Yee. It's called Sick of It. It's Sky One, 27th of September, 10 o'clock. Tune in. Support Carl and support us. Tell your mates, come join us, drop us a message. And until next week, stay safe, look after yourself, have a little bit of fun. All right. I've been Craig Parkinson. He's been producer Griff. And this has been the Two Shot Podcast. Cheers. The Two Shot Podcast is presented by me, Craig Parkinson, recorded and produced by Thomas Griffin for Splicing Block. Our music, our brilliant music, is courtesy of Then Thickens. Cheers. Cheers.